morning, WeFest. It's good to be here. Um, so I have 10 minutes now, I'm told. Um, so I'm going to try to say the important things. Um, I, I really like the uh, title of our gathering, uh, Lost in Transition, with a question mark on the end. I like it for uh, both words. I like the word transition because it recognizes that this isn't uh, some, you know, maybe new economic sector that is going to have some kind of contribution to play in the world as we know it, but that it's part of a change, a change that we can all sense. Um, and I think that, that most people understand that the crisis that our society faces isn't something that we're just going to fix and continue on as normal but it's a crisis that goes all the way to the bottom in some sense. Maybe we don't know what the bottom is, but we, many, many people have a feeling that everything is gonna change. And I think that, um, that the collaborative economy gives us maybe a hint of um, a different way of life and a different experience of life and a different experience of who we are. I also like the word lost because we don't know how to do this. Um, we have grown up in a, in a world uh, that we have long thought to be normal and unchangeable, and we see that that world is falling apart. Uh, and we also have these glimpses of what the future could be. And collaborative, uh, you know, most people's involvement in collaborative economy comes from some kind of experience of collaboration or some kind of experience of connection where you think, what if the world were built on this? So we have a glimpse maybe of the destination or at least a feeling that there is an important destination, but we don't know what it is necessarily exactly, and we certainly don't know how to get there. Uh, so we're lost in between, perhaps, um, exploring and experimenting and trying things and, and, and seeing how perhaps sometimes you know, in the end, they're just more of the same, and we feel disappointed, and certainly there are a lot of um, powerful critiques <clears throat> of the sharing economy. Um, but that doesn't mean that that destination is a false destination. So uh, maybe I'll, I'd like to say a little bit about what that destination might be. Um, and perhaps um, I'll say a word about the existing uh, economy and um, the deeper stories that it comes from. <clears throat> because the transition that we're going through, I believe it's a transition in our stories, in our deep narratives. You could even say in our mythology that tells us who we are, that tells us what's normal, what's important in life, how change happens in the world, even what's real, and the role of humanity on Earth. That the change is nothing less than that. So the existing economy is part of a story of separation that says who you are is a separate self in a world of other. Uh, and, and there are a bunch of other separate selves out there. You're kind of this bubble of psychology encased in flesh or a soul encased in flesh or perhaps the expression of your uh, nuclear DNA that seeks to maximize rational self-interest. Or in economics, the same thing. You're an economic actor seeking to ma maximize rational self-interest. Uh, the world outside of you is full of competitors and full of natural forces that don't care about you and that have no inherent purpose. Therefore, your well-being comes through dominating that which is outside of yourself and exploiting it for maximum advantage. And that's all built into this understanding of what a self is and how the world works. Uh, and we've built a civilization on top of that, which is no longer working because we're realizing that we're not in fact separate from each other, that even the paradise of financial independence is bereft of everything important for human happiness, intimacy, connection, community. And our 
separation from nature and domination of nature and um, conquest of these natural forces is generating ecological crisis as we learn that we're not actually separate from the rest of nature. That what we do to the ecosystem, we're doing to ourselves inescapably and that there is no um, technological fix to protect ourselves from the consequences of what we do. And we're learning that socially as well. Um, that what we do to the rest of the world comes back into our own society, into our own homes even. That um, to take the foreign policy example, that the, that the violence that um, certain countries perpetrate on the others comes back somehow as domestic violence because we're not actually separate selves. Who we are, and this is perhaps a new story that is evolving today, um, who we are are interconnected, interdependent, interexistent beings. Therefore, what we do to any person, we do to ourselves. And we're also learning that the world outside of ourselves has the qualities of a self in some way, has some kind of purpose or intelligence that we desire to contribute to. Our fundamental nature then is not maximizing, <coughs> excuse me, not maximizing rational self-interest, but a very, very fundamental desire is to contribute to something greater than ourselves, to contribute to the well-being of others. And when we do that, we discover a different kind of wealth that doesn't depend on control. This understanding of wealth was common in ancient societies, which were all gift cultures. And in a gift culture, the more generous you were, the richer you were. Because if you took care of people, then they would take care of you too. If you gave generously, people would want to give generously to you. And that was your insurance policy. That was your source of wealth. You didn't need to hoard and accumulate and control. In the last several thousand years, and especially the last several hundred years, we've left gift culture behind and created a mass society that is based fundamentally on competition. We've also left behind a gift relationship to nature where we understood that, that nature is not only a source of resources, but we need to give back to nature. Our relationship to nature has to be uh, in a circle, um, the circle of the gift. So this, we've departed from that understanding both on a social and ecological level. And now we are coming back to it. Our transition back to a gift perception of the world and of each other is being born of the crisis that we face. Our old story isn't working anymore. And so we're launched into the space between stories where all of the old certainties are falling apart. Everything that seemed <clears throat> uh, unquestionable and real and permanent, even our economic and financial system, um, even the, the value of money itself is now questionable. In 2008, it almost disintegrated. And now we have the feeling that we're living on borrowed time. So we're being pushed by these crises toward um, a very different world. And this is a new thing. Um, to gift cultures were on a scale of a few hundred people in ancient villages and tribes. We've never done this on a mass scale, on the scale of millions or billions. And so what we're gathered here together to do is we're, we're exploring um, how do we get from the age of separation to the age of reunion, to the understanding of interconnection, interbeing? How do we build a society on this? Part of this transition is a different experience of who we are. In the world of competition and in the money system that we're familiar with, um, and in that story of a self, who we are is our, our separate selves competing with each other. But all of us understand that we're more than that because anybody who has achieved perfect um, financial independence 
you might have a high salary, lots of investments, but you're not going to feel satisfied with your life unless you're contributing to something that's beautiful to you, that's meaningful to you, that engages your gifts. Okay, I get the message. <laughs> Even um, the most um, profit-oriented uh, sharing economy businesses, I think deep down <clears throat> want to contribute to a new and, and ancient um, <clears throat> way of, <clears throat> of living and way of interacting um, in the world. Because even if you, we have the paradise of financial independence, we will not feel fully human if we're not contributing to something greater than ourselves. If we are not, in some sense, living in the gift, we'll feel like, you know, I'm just living the life I'm paid to live. I'm not living my life. What about living in, and contributing to something that I care about for real? So as you go through this festival, um, I just offer you perhaps the idea of practicing um, the foundation of the transition to a collaborative economy, the foundation being how we see ourselves and how we see each other, and, well, how we see the world, too, um, which is you meet somebody and you think, what gift does this person bring? And what is this beautiful thing beyond ourselves, beyond my power to create, that I can only create in collaboration. I don't know how to get there. I don't know how to do it. But I do know how to follow an impulse and be guided toward this beautiful thing that in our conversations together, perhaps we gain a little bit more clarity on. Uh, so the invitation is to um, really walk in the understanding that you are here to give, that you are here to collaborate, and that the place that we're going, that we're maybe a little lost in finding, but the place that we're going is a world <coughs> built, <coughs> excuse me, a world built on that understanding. And maybe in the exercise at the beginning with the eye contact, we got a little taste of that, that feeling that we're not really separate. So um, thank you for your attention. And I will see you, <clears throat> I'm having a little, I think I'm reaching puberty here or something. Um, but thank you for your attention and have a great fest. Thank you so much, Charles.